What is up, everyone, and welcome to another scintillating edition of the Weekend and Rewind, also known as Word. But because I just got done with the upload event last night, and how about that KSI Joe Weller press conference? Things got a little chippy, and I like when things get chippy because it means the emotion is flowing. So I'm expecting a pretty good fight, even though it's five months away. It seems like a really long time. Anyway, and because I'm in the middle of the FIFA 18 game capture, and I'm gonna have some good videos from this event. They're gonna come out either this weekend or next week. It's gonna be awesome. I just gotta keep this video shorter than usual, and for that, I need you to please accept my sincere apologies. I'm done being sorry. Let's get to the top stories, including Manchester City putting the what, 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 what beatdown of Liverpool 5 0, which means by my math that since City beat Liverpool by five goals and Liverpool beat Arsenal by four goals a few weeks ago, City is nine goals better than Arsenal this season, and I don't care if Arsenal comfortably beat Bournemouth at home 3 0 this weekend, they should beat Bournemouth, especially when their manager finally puts his best players in their best positions, or just his players in their best positions. And yes, I know City benefited from Sadio Mane's unfortunate red card because I truly believe he was just trying to play the ball, but you can't stud someone like that and not get a red card. I mean, that looked like it hurt. Unless, of course, you're Nigel De Jong in the first few minutes of a World Cup final against Xavi Alonso. You guys remember that? Anyway, my takeaways from this game, despite City's incredible amount of talent and experience, they still feel like a confidence team to me. And what I mean by that is that when things are good, things are good and they're unbeatable. But when things are bad, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like they have enough in them to fight through it sometimes. But maybe that changes this season because City is really, really good and they might not have too many tough things to fight through. And my other takeaway is that it is crystal clear that Liverpool's back four is gonna hurt them this season. I know we've talked about it, but it's, even at 10 men, especially I guess when they had 10 men, they should have good team shape and be compact. And they just got split down the middle so many times. And it was embarrassing and frankly unacceptable. So I'm curious to see how Jurgen Klopp tries to cover this up because it's a glaring weakness and with the transfer window closed. So, I don't know. And damn it, I gotta make this quicker because I'm talking too much and I gotta run, I gotta literally, gotta run but I love talking to you guys about this so I don't know anyway my other takeaways from some Premier League action this weekend with their 3-0 spanking of Everton at Goodison Park they just got the pants pulled down and spanked it's clear that Spurs absolutely love not playing at Wembley and Harry Kane absolutely loves scoring when it's not August with his two goals including the shot cross or Schross on the first one like that hashtag Schross. And Frank DeBoer should be fired after Crystal Palace became the first team in league history to not score a goal in their first four games, which is pretty impressive. And I'm just gonna say this now. Peace out, Frank. And a hat tip to Alvaro Morata for scoring again for Chelsea. He's looking like a great signing. And N'Golo Conte for scoring the game winner against his former club. And Brighton for their first win of the season. And Watford and Newcastle for their first road wins of the season. And get in, my son. Can I say that now? Can I act like an English person if I'm in England? I don't know. And Romelu Lukaku was the captain of my fantasy team, which helped since he scored. But I feel like he should have scored more, but I guess I always feel that way about him. I kind of feel that way about Manchester United in general in their 2-2 draw against the very game, Eric Maxim Choupo-Moting, who had two goals in Stoke City. I feel like United either needed to score more goals or just hold on to their 2-1 lead. But a draw at Stoke isn't the worst thing, so I guess I get it. As for the fantasy stuff, I don't know who's in the lead of our Warm Ballers Premier League, but I know it's not me, and that is bullshit, and you guys are a bunch of cheaters. Yeah, I said it. And now let's move from England to everywhere else, so I can talk this week in Neymar, who had a goal and an assist and a man of the match performance in PSG's 5-1 win on the road versus Mets. Once again proving that Liga is way too easy for Neymar, but he did have to share some of the spotlight with Kylian Mbappe, who scored on his debut for PSG. So I guess we'll see how Neymar feels about that since I kind of feel like he left Barcelona to have the spotlight all for himself. Right? Right? You know I'm right. Also, very well played from Nice this weekend when they absolutely destroyed Monaco 4-0 behind two goals from Super Mario Balotelli. And I guess this is the part of the video where I'm reminded that Spencer and I had terrible predictions from Friday. Just awful. Except the one where I said Barcelona would crush Espanyol, which they did 5-0, and Leo Messi scored a hat-trick as he does, which had to taste even sweeter as Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid 
both drop points again this weekend, meaning Barcelona has already created a four-point gap over their two biggest rivals for the La Liga title. And yes, I know there's like 35 more games to go. I don't want to hear it. And in Germany, Mark Uth e struck twice to give Hoffenheim all three points against Bayern Munich, which was a bit surprising for me because I thought Hoffenheim had lost some quality in the transfer window. We've talked about it before, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised with their young manager, Julian Nagelsmann, and what he continues to do. It's really impressive, especially since Hoffenheim took four points off of Bayern last season, which now sees Hoffenheim, this upstart German club, leapfrog over Bayern Munich into second place, while Bayern drop into sixth place, which has got to be really hard for them. But we all know how the story is going to end with Bayern winning the title. And in Italy, I mean, could anyone really predict that Lazio would put four goals past AC Milan in 11 minutes to seal a huge 4-1 victory? Or that Ciro Mobile, who didn't have the best international outing during the World Cup qualifiers recently, would be the star of the show with a hat trick and an assist? I mean, prior to last season, Mobile had 10 goals in two seasons in a really disappointing stint with Borussia Dortmund. I thought he would do better there. But after scoring 23 goals last season, he's picking up right where he's left off. And that's very cool to see. I'm a big fan of the underdogs that fight back, because I might have been one myself. But Milan, come on, what the f I expected better from you. And in MLS, the big stories for me are Toronto FC absolutely demolishing the San Jose Earthquakes 4-0 one of my former clubs. So take one more step towards having the best regular season record in MLS history, and I think they're gonna do it. And Atlanta United, one of the brand new teams this season, opening up their brand new stadium with a 3-0 win over the used to be good, but I'm not sure what happened to them. FC Dallas, who haven't won a game in almost two months, and I have to mention the Portland Timbers, Rose City Till I Die, who went to New York and beat NYCFC 1-0 after a very bad play from our Lord and Savior, Andrea Pirlo. I gotta show you the highlight, but I don't know if I wanna show you the highlight. It's just, it's just really sad. Anyway, the Timbers went on top of the Western Conference with this win, and they look like they're having a good run of form at the right time. And I know I owe you coverage from Liga MA Keys and everywhere else in the world that doesn't get the coverage it deserves, but I have to bounce. FIFA 18 is calling my name. Can you hear it? Inyo, 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 inyo. So I will catch up with you guys later. Later. <laughs>